Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, Fountain Pen Focus Day, we're going to focus on this. This is a handmade pen from Fremantle Market. I've had this a couple of years. Very pretty pen. Join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pen. We'll walk through the body. We'll do some size comparisons, some weights and measures, a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for this pen. Welcome down to the table. Here we've got today's pen. This is the Fremantle handmade pen bought from Fremantle Markets. I've had this a couple of years and I have thought about getting another one, but every time I've been to the market again, he's never been there. And to get to the market takes maybe about an hour's drive. So it's, a, it's not an inconsiderable distance to go. It's a very pretty pen though. Just look at this as I turn it around. We've got loads of greys, we've got silvers, we've got this gorgeous like yellows and is it maybe some browns in there. Very nice pen. Let's start by taking a walk through the body. So we start at the top. We've got more or less a flat top. There is a little tiny point. You can hardly feel it. And this is like a black plastic. We come down to this gold colored ring here. And then below that, it looks like it's an actual separate ring. We've got the clip again, gold colors, the clip, nice shape, unusual. And is it springy or not? Yeah, it's extremely springy. There you can see that coming out. Very nice. The, the cap, it's the same width all the way down. When we get to just below the clip, it does feel like it starts to taper down ever so slightly till we get to this gold colored ring in there. Got some shapes there. It's all cut out and stuck. I believe this is a kit pen, or at least based off a kit pen. Bottom of the cap, the ring has got a little bit of a taper and we go down to the body. Can't feel much of a drop off when we go down to the body. The body, same width until it gets to virtually the end, maybe five millimeters off the end where it starts to taper down. We're tapering down to another gold colored ring. We've got some black threads. I'll demonstrate those in a minute. Then we've got the end of the pen, which has got this little knob there and a flat top. Quite a nice pen. The material, this is what's interesting. This material is what makes this pen different. So the gentleman that makes these, what he does is he gets various like minerals. So I'm guessing he just goes out in the countryside, collects various minerals, rocks, grinds them up, mixes them with the resin. So he actually creates this himself. So it's quite unique in that respect. When I bought this, you had two choices of what to buy. You could buy a ballpoint pen or you could buy a pack, which was a fountain pen plus a ballpoint pen. You couldn't buy the fountain pens individually, which is a shame, I think, because, you know, for me, I didn't want the ballpoint pen. And I think in the two years I've had it, it's not left the draw. It's still, I say, it's still quite nice. We'll take the cap off. So there's half. There's one. About one and a quarter turn. So that's not too bad. And that's coming off these black plastic threads here. That reveals the section and the nib. We'll start with the section. The section, extremely thin. Look, let me just put my fingers there. <laughs> very, very thin. You can feel that when you're writing. I find sometimes it can be quite uncomfortable. All right, for short sentence, you know, a couple of sentences. But when I'm doing like longer notes, I do find my fingers ache very quickly. We've got a little teeny tiny nib there. Just going to hold that up so you can hopefully see it. It's very small. So it's got silver on the outside. We've got a gold colored inside with a little bit of fancy decoration. And then we've got Iridium Point Germany. This is a medium nib. He only sells medium nibs. If we unscrew the body, in there we've got a converter. It comes with a converter. It's quite a nice converter, works well. As you can see, I've had to prime this, not because of any flow issues. I actually filled this with a little bit of a sample that I had left. So what I did is I just primed it to get that ink flowing. Once it started flowing, I've had no issues with it. 
and that was a personal choice because I wanted to use up the sample. I've got metal fittings, so don't even think about eyedropper in this pen. Let's pop the saw back together. All in all, it's actually not too bad a pen, as a bit on the thin side, and we'll see as we go along with that. Let's swap on over and do some size comparisons. I've brought in my two standard pens, so we've got the Pilot Metropolitan and we've got the Lamy Safari. All three pens very much of the same in terms of length. Yes, this three mantle pen I would say is ever so slightly the shorter of the three. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, again I've got to be honest, there's not a lot of difference in it. The three mantle one though is still the shorter. When we take a look at the sections though, we can see how small that section is, how thin it is. Nib size, I would say slightly smaller than the nib I see on the Pilot Metropolitan, and that's a number five Japanese nib. Just gonna see what this is like in the hand. There we go. In the hand, unposted, not too bad. I tend to use this unposted. It's a little bit of weight to it, which we'll see shortly. It does post, and this is why I was saying about these black threads. So it posts, and then it twists on, so it's solidly posted. Posted, it does feel longer, you know, a lot longer, and it's very back heavy. You know, we've got this gorgeous material on the cap that adds quite a bit of weight to it. Very uncomfortable to me. If I, I feel like if I let go, it's gonna topple backwards. It hasn't, but as I say, I tend to use this unposted. But let's take a look at the pens posted. With the pens posted, the Fremantle pen sits just between the other two. So it's a nice length, as I say, it does feel very back heavy. Let's swap on over and look at some pens in roughly the same price range. We'll start with the pens unposted. Neither of these two pens post very well. So I've brought in a Nowall Stool Kill, 89 Aussie dollars. The Fremantle pen, 99 Aussie dollars. Remember though, it comes with a ballpoint pen as well in this same material. And a Retro 51 Tornado, 105 Aussie dollars. Width-wise, again, look, we've got a big difference in the width of those sections. Both the pens I brought in take number six size nibs. We've got the now all nib there, and we've got the Retro 51 nib there. If I line up by the bottom of the nib, which is really what you do when you're writing because it's the nib that's on the paper, the Fremantle pen, ever so slightly shorter than the Retro 51, noticeably shorter than the Now Wall. The Now Wall is a piston filled pen. The Retro 51 is a cartridge converter. If I was to line these pens up by the section, the Now Wall then, in terms of the body part of it alone, you know, the section and the nice body, about the same length as the Fremantle pen. Let's pop the caps on these. With the caps on, we've got a big difference now between the Fremantle pen and the Narwhal, but the Retro 51, you know, it's within millimeters in terms of the length. Let's swap on over and fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. Let's fetch in the pen. So with the cap on, this comes in at 13.4 centimeters. Unposted. That's 12.3 centimetres. As I say, it does post, posts extremely well because it screws on, and that gives us 15.7 centimetres. The width of the cap, that's 1.5 centimetres. It's roughly the same width all the way down. The width of the body, 1.3 centimetres. The section, as I say, it's very thin. It goes from 0.79 centimetres up to 0.87 centimeters. I think this is the thinnest section I've got on all my pens. It's a nice fit in hand if you're only doing one or two lines. After that, I find because my fingers are so close together, I'm squeezing so hard, it can start to make my hand ache. Let's swap on over and we'll fetch in the scales of weighing. Here we've got the scales of weighing. The whole pen. 39 grams, nice weighty pen. The body, 23 grams. The cap, 16 grams. 
the cap is actually heavier than a lot of my other pens in total. This is why I'm saying it feels so back heavy. Imagine you're putting 16 grams extra on the back of this. Let's get this out of the way and we'll fetch in the notepad of testing. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. This is what I always love about doing these reviews. It's the writing samples. So the notepad of testing, I use paper, 100 GSM paper, made in India. The pen, Fremantle handmade pen, Australian made pen. As I said earlier, albeit it's based off a kit pen. So let's write. So we've got here a Fremantle handmade pen. With a medium nib. Cost wise, it was $99 plus the ballpoint. The ink, I went for an Australian ink. It's Robert Hoster. And it's Australis Oak. Australian theme today, isn't it? Let's look at drying times. So there's a media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. And we've virtually dry a little tiny smudge, so I'm not going to do a one minute test. Line variation. So here's no pressure. Here's with pressure. Slightly wider line. So no pressure with, none with, none with. You can see the slightly wider line on my downstrokes when I put that little bit of pressure on. Now we'll move the mic and write a sentence. That's not too bad. We did have an issue here with the eye. I didn't go and redo it. I want you to see what's happening as I write it. When I'm writing, there's a lot of audible feedback. It feels, it's not squeaking, um, and I don't know how well it came over on the mic, but there's definitely a lot of sound coming off. There's not a lot of tactile feedback though, so I don't feel too much coming through my fingers, but that could be because that section's so narrow. So I'm actually squeezing my finger against my thumb rather than against the actual section. It's still quite a pleasant experience. Let's look at the flow test. Yeah, it keeps up really well there. I do like this ink, and I know we're here to talk about the pen. This is the last of this ink. It's a sample that I've got. Seeing quite a bit of shading coming out and here you can see on the first line where it's been sat for a few days since I last did my testing with it. The ink has darkened but it soon lightens up. Quite an interesting ink. So what are my thoughts and scores for this pen? We'll start with pen looks. Very pretty, very nice. I love this material. Handmade you know, hand created, he's grinding the pigments up himself, he's using Australian stuff, fully Australian, apart from I'm guessing the kit pen, I'm guessing the kit pen portion, that would come from China. Very, very nice, I really like the looks of this, there's loads of colour, there's sparkles, it, just look at the way it, there, it flats and plays in the light. 
I actually like the gold tim trim with it as well. I think the gold trim, you know, especially where we've got the yellows, fetches out that trim quite nicely. So for pen looks, 9 out of 10. Build quality, had no issues. Say, so I've had it a couple of years. Biggest concern is the section, but that's not to do with the build quality. Writes well, had a couple of little issues, but they're easily sorted. Build quality, 8 out of 10. Writing experience. Well, as we saw, especially when we did the sentence, we get quite a lot of that audible feedback. I like listening to it. It's really nice. And I find it really enjoyable to write with. I'd have liked a bit more tactile feedback, but that's a very personal thing. Yeah, we did have that one issue, but I'm going to write that off maybe even as I didn't have the pen close enough to the paper. Writing experience, 8 out of 10. Ink flow. I'm going to fetch in my Tomoe River paper. This is... 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. So here we go. Fremantle handmade pen, Robert Oster Australis Oak. You can see in here we've got loads of gorgeous shading coming through. Looks very nice, lots of character to the ink. F flow, as in, we can see here, flows all right, had no issues, had no flow issues, had no skipping, had no hard starts when I was doing this test. Very nice. For ink flow, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Comfort. This is where we start to hit it. Too thin. Way, way, way too thin in this section. I find it very uncomfortable to use. Say, so sentence or two, like we've been doing here, is fine. But when I'm trying to do, like when I was doing that Tomo River paper, by the time I got to the bottom of that page, my finger was aching from being squashed so hard. You know, it looks nice. It's heavy. It's got a nice weight to it. I do like weight to my pen. Yes, you can post it, but it just makes it too heavy to use for me. For comfort, I can only give it a 7 out of 10. Value for money. Always the interesting one. This isn't it. I'm in two minds about this pen. I think it looks pretty. I think it looks really, really nice. And I can see that a lot of work went into creating the material. You know, he's got to have gone and found it. He's got to have ground it and get the particles fine enough. He's got to have mixed it with a resin. So I can see where that work comes in. And then even once he's got the resin and got it on the pen, he's got to polish it. You know, this is fairly highly polished and very smooth. There's no roughness to it at all. But the price to me seemed very high. Coupling it with a ballpoint, to me, it's not a good idea. I was not interested in the ballpoint. I didn't want the ballpoint. It sat, as I said, for two years in a drawer, completely unused, which is a shame. That to, is really the biggest letdown. It's actually having to buy it for $99 with a ballpoint. So value for money, I've got to be honest, I'm going to be very, very generous here and give it a 7 out of 10. That means the total score for the Fremantle Handmade Pen and Robert Oster Australis Oak is 7.83 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What handmade pens do you have? Have you got any that are based on kits? Do you actually make pens from kits? Please drop a comment down below. I'd love to kickstart a conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.